Orville Peck Bronco album review. Let's chat about it. Hey guys, what's going on? John here from What's Spinning here tonight to chat about this latest from Mr. Orville Peck, very mysterious masked country star out of Canada who, as of recently, has been making quite the name for himself in a big way, and I cannot resist. And I get it, man. His debut album, Pony, is fantastic. It is a very compelling blend of classic country sounds mixed with some very shiny modern production. But he was also bringing in a lot of really interesting elements. For example, there seemed to be a post-punk influence on tracks like Buffalo Run and my favorite, Turn to Hate. I wanted to hear more. And shortly after, we did hear more with the Show Pony EP, which I, I think kind of gets a little bit of a bad reputation. It's, it's not amazing or fantastic. It just wasn't expansive and I just was craving to hear so much more from him at the time. Uh, it did give us that Legends Never Die single with Shania Twain though, which is a banger. Now truth be told, I have been more excited for this album here for so many reasons, much more than most albums I've reviewed this year. Mostly because I just have been so excited to see what Orville has done with his career going forward. And I've been more and more excited just because it seemed like every single that he was dropping, I have been super into on the Bronco EPs that he's been dropping leading up to this album. Without further ado, let's chat about it. This album starts off with Daytona Sand and it is a great start. I love his moody croon on this track. I love the upbeat riff. This is just such a great sort of outlaw country track. I mean, clearly, the guy appreciates very classic country sound. He does it very well here, too. I love the old school throwback storytelling on this track. But of course, it's more than that. The glamorous production is really nice, as well as his personality, which is something that is lacking in so much modern country and a major selling point behind him. And the overall driving sensation that this track comes with just really just gets me so amped to listen to the rest of this album which <laughs> it's it's a, it's a really good album In a lot of ways, it's the country album that I needed right now. The Curse of the Blackened Eye is really good as well, which features songwriting credits of Tobias Gesso Jr., which is just really cool. It's much more of a ballad, and I want to take a moment to just point out Orville's vocals, because that's another major selling point behind this album. If you were not into his vocals on Pony and his show Pony EP, which, trust me, I get it. I think his vocals have come full circle and he sounds a whole lot better these days. This is an incredibly heartfelt and emotional ballad and another big check on this album. Out of Time is freaking gorgeous. I mean, it is a little straightforward. And you know what? You can also argue that he has this sound built in the past and he rips from it just a little bit too much. And yeah, I get that. But I honestly think he does it really well and brings it up to date just enough. It's super heartfelt, it has a great respect for the old school ballad, and it picks up nicely really well too. It's just so obvious, and some of the elements of blues rock that we get in the final minute are really nice too. As far as a deep cut goes that wasn't a single, I think Lafayette's the best one here. I love that driving riff once again, I love the nods to Outlaw Country. All the while remaining just as heartfelt, and this chorus is a knockout. I've enjoyed Come On Baby Cry since it dropped as a single, it's a really lovely little ballad. I mean, as far as actually a true blue old school ballad goes, I don't think it gets much closer than this. And it is a heartfelt one. And it's done so tastefully. It almost comes off like a cover at times, which is another thing that I kind of feel like people might say about this album. But if it did, if it was in some weird universe a cover, it's a damn good one. Also, that's just another telling point to just how appreciative to classic country Orville is. Irish Rose, on the other hand, takes me back to a lot of the country that, you know, I, I played around me when I was young. And yes, there is a nostalgia factor to that, but it's super flashy and glamorous and very current sounding. And this big hook is just so passionate. I don't really get some of the complaints about his vocals. I love them. I think its greatest sin this album is how long it is, honestly. Uh, mostly because this album has so much great material. If they shaved two tracks off this thing, it could have easily been near perfect or just about as close to perfect as it could get. You know, I just kind of think that this album has a few too many tracks. I don't 
really think that blush is that good. I hate saying this, but this is probably the most generic track here, but it sounds a thousand times more like a cover, maybe one that didn't really go as planned either. It's even goofy in parts, and for a few short minutes, I actually really understand why some people might not be into this album. I have a lot of the same feelings on Let Me Drown. I'm not that into this one either. I honestly just feel like he's gone to the well too many times with this sound, and it's a shame because his heart is certainly here. And visually, it's certainly fine, but it's also one of the few moments where I feel like this album, you know, it's a bit much. And I'm not really that into all I can say either as a finale. Now, this is a duet with Bria Salamino, who is totally fine. Her vocals are up to snuff. But trust me, there are just so many better tracks on this album. I, I can't even tell you. This just sounds like the Spark Notes version of this album. Like a bunch of good ideas condensed into a smaller tune, but just kind of chopped up. I don't really get caught up with it the way that I wish I could. Outside of that, though, this may be the most niche recording that I've reviewed this year. And if you don't get it, I'm not going to push it on you. As a matter of fact, I know that there's a lot of people that aren't going to be into this album. I know that there's a lot of people that are just be annoyed by this album. And I get that. But I love it. Kalahari Down? Not for nothing, I think this is the best track here. And it was really hard for me to pick just one to say this is my track of the album, but I love how spacious it is. It is. I love how it takes five minutes to get where it's going, but not in a boring way, in a really epic way. The pacing is miraculous here. It gives me the chills, and by the end of it, it's literally one of the most larger-than-life sounding tracks here. It is awesome. I really needed a track like Bronco halfway through the album. It's upbeat, it's rowdy. It's actually... Probably one of the more off-the-rails sounding tracks that Orville's ever put out. It's something I'd love to hear a little bit more of. It's exciting, and it breaks up the album really wonderfully. It's a smart move. Trample Out the Days is a really interesting one, too. I needed a little bit of a shift at this point, and I get that. I love the very twinkling riff that we get here. It's very nocturnal. It's actually really gorgeous. And speaking of gorgeous, my lord, his vocals on this track. It is unbelievable. I knew that I was going to like this album, but I couldn't have told you that I was going to like this album this much. Hexy Mountains is one of the most stripped down tracks here, but I think I needed that too. It is really beautiful, and it does sort of come off like a cover once again, but ah, uh, God, is it ever like a good sound. I mean, his heart is so into this. It's also one of the more personal and revealing tracks that we get here. We get a lot of those in this later half of the album. And he turn is a really nice late album treat too. It's once again really upbeat, really rowdy. That outlaw vibe is back. Even lyrically, this track is off the rails. And I really hope you hear more tracks like this in the future because he does it justice. City of Gold is really nice too. As far as like a breezy folk track, uh, something I didn't think I was going to be into from him, it's actually really nice. And I continue to just really, really appreciate just how personal and deep and genuinely emotional some of these later tracks are it's really commendable uh this album is commendable damn you orville this is this is really 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 good i knew i was going to enjoy this album a lot uh it's over the top it is full of personality it is glitzy it is epic it is heartfelt it's got more ballads than i could have imagined honestly but an outlaw vibe to it as well orville's got a lot of great things going for him right now and like i said i think the greatest sin that this album commits is it's 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 a little long it's almost an hour they could have shaved off two tracks here and this would have been a nine but honestly guys i'm loving this and it's a very niche record and if you're not into this i totally 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 get it but personally i love the hell out of this thing it's beautiful it's emotional it's got heart man uh which are things that i can't say about most modern countries so i am feeling a very strong eight on this album but let me know what you guys think down below if you like the video be sure to give us a like give us a subscribe and let me know down below what you would like for me to chat about in the future and until next time have a great day, guys.